Uh, welcome back. We have had great financial advice all week, and today we're answering some of your questions. We're talking mini financial makeovers, small things you can do to improve your finances. Here with all the answers is financial expert and founder of Her Money, Jean Chatsky, also known as Jean Chatsky. Jean, Jean, Jean Chatsky. Hey, Jean. So, Jean, let's get We've started. We've got a lot of questions from our audience, yes. and we thought we would start there. Okay. okay. So, Tina from Colorado says, should I continue to invest in my mutual fund or put that money in a savings account until the market turns upward? So, just to be clear, when you put your money in the mutual fund, you're putting it in stocks, typically mm -hmm. stocks and bonds, but you're putting it in the market. And you need to know when you are going to need to use this money. If you're not going to need it for at least five years, it's okay to think about putting it in the market. But Let shorter than that, you want to think about putting it somewhere safer, like in the bank, in a savings account. And what she's alluding to here by trying to wait the market out is mm -hmm. timing the market. It doesn't work. Even people who think they can do it typically can't do it. Um, and that's because the very best days in the market often occur during the worst periods. Mm -hmm. And if you miss even the 10 best days, you are going to cut your returns by a lot. Okay. Got it. Uh, next, Sherry from New York asks, is it a good time to put money into a one-year CD, or is it better to open a high-yield savings account? Well, these are both doing a lot better than they were a year ago before the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates. Right now, mm -hmm. a one-year CD, if you search for the best returns, is paying about 4.3%. A high-yield savings account is paying about 3.3%. Okay. But they're different. If you put your money in a CD for a year, you are locking it up for a year. And if you need to get your money get back, it. You have to penalties. break that CD and pay penalties. On the flip side, with that savings account, the Federal Reserve is going to keep raising interest rates. And as they do, the interest rate that you get on that savings account is going to go higher. Mm. So I would say if you don't need the money for a solid year, go with the CD right now. Otherwise, go savings. Okay. Uh, Caitlin from Alabama asks, what are some easy ways to ensure my family sticks to the budget? So I've been doing this a long time, and I can tell you there's only one way to make sure that you stick to a budget, and that's to know where your money is going. You've got yeah. to track your spending, and there are lots of different ways to track your spending. You can use an app. You can make all of your purchases on a debit card that is linked to your bank account and then look at your bank mm -hmm. account. That's what I do. You can use pencil and paper. You just have to find the system that works for you and stick to it. And if none of those work, go to cash. Um, it's a lot harder to spend cash. Because it's real. Because yeah. it is. You it's it's real. It's You're real. not, not tapping, tapping your cell phone yeah. against and, the thing. And check out TikTok. There's a bunch of videos about cash stuffing, which is basically the old envelope system where you say, this is my cash for groceries, this is my cash for oh, right. gifts, this mm -hmm. is my cash for other things, and it helps you stay honest. Okay, we're going to get a break. We'll come back. More questions. Emily, you're up next. When we come back with Jean Chatsky right after this. Okay, we're back with financial expert Jean Chatsky, and she's answering your financial questions. Up next, Emily from New York says, I have two kids, and besides a New York 529, we haven't started saving for college. There are so many options. Where should we start? What's a New York 529? A 529 is a state-sponsored college savings account. Okay. And every state has 529s. Mm -hmm. Some states have more than one, and so you want to choose the right one. But the way that they work and the reason that they're good is that there are some tax advantages. So you put money into a 529 like you'd put it into an IRA or a 401k. It grows tax-free, and when you pull the money out, as long as you're using it for what they call qualified educational expenses, you don't pay any taxes on the oh. growth. And the qualified educational expenses are pretty vast. Like Things like computers count mm -hmm. on that list. It's not just tuition and room and board. But you want to pick the right account. So there's a website called savingforcollege.com that rates these plans. There's another morningstar.com that rates these plans. Set it up and then treat it like a 401k. Just put some money in every single month. It'll grow. And tell the grandparents that you did this, by the way, because they'll make contributions to it. Oh, that's help. actually a great idea. Yeah. Okay. okay. Claire from Pennsylvania wrote, I'm 50 years old in good health and currently evaluating whether it makes sense to purchase a long-term uh, a long-term care life insurance policy. Is this a good investment? Well, 
50 years old is actually the right time to start looking at long-term care policies. Okay. If you're going to buy a policy to pay for your care down the road, this is about when you want to do it because by the time you're 60, you might have a health condition and you might not qualify. The thing that people don't like about long-term care insurance is that it's pure insurance and it's pricey. And if you don't need care, you've put a lot of money into premiums and you're not typically going to get it back. So the insurance industry has started rolling out these hybrid policies. It's a life insurance policy mixed with long-term care mm. so that if you need the care, you can pull the money out of the policy, but if you don't need the care, the policy will just stay, and when you die, somebody will inherit that money. So people feel like that's a little bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. On the whole, about long-term care insurance, I would say don't try to buy as much as you might think you might need. Just buy enough to bear you minimum. through. Exactly. Like an insurance, it really is an insurance, but it's carrying the umbrella in your backpack. <laughs> exactly. It, it's, it's guaranteeing you won't need it if you have it. Right, yeah. right. In most cases, yeah. which by the way, when it comes to long-term care, I, I would go for that. Yeah. All right, one more here. This is uh, a question you seem to get over and over again. Well, or is I, there a question you seem to get over and over again? The question that I get a lot is from people who are around 50 who say, I haven't done anything? Is it too late? And, and where do I start? How do I start saving at 50 for my future? And you're making a face, but no, I'm just what like, face the face I'm making is one of like terror and agony for, for people who for haven't people started, who haven't started. Oh, it's a Friday. It, except that 50 is a lot younger than it used to be. And when you're 50, it's you are, <laughs> it's yeah, still it sounds okay. aged to me. <laughs> and when you're 50, you probably have 20 years of working until you get to retirement. So today is the best time to start, right? And just start small, open an investment account, a retirement account, start putting a small amount of money in it every single month. And think about what sort of life changes you can make now so that you can save a little bit more, right? If you're thinking, oh, well, I'm gonna downsize when I retire, do it now. Mm -hmm. And then start funneling $1,000 every single month into your retirement account, if you do that for 20 years and it grows at 8%, you're gonna have more than a half million dollars. And you can take a decent amount of risk in your 50s with your investments because you have a long-term time horizon. You can put 50, 60, 70% of that money in stocks. As you get older, you wanna take less risk so that if the market takes a tumble right before you retire, you're not in terrible mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hit you so hard. Great tips. Thanks, Jean. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Really appreciate it. For these it. tips and more, you can go to our website and check out Jean's podcast, Her Money with Jean Chatsky. We'll be right back with the inbox after this.